So let's think about this. Right now, I have a coordinate plane here, um, our quadrants labeled with just um, the signs of the x's and y's uh, in those quadrants. So in the first quadrant, y'all know, x is positive, y is positive. Second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Um, third quadrant, x is negative, y is negative. Fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. Okay, so let's apply this to our trig ratios. Um, we just talked about the fact that um, um, the opposite being the y, okay, and the adjacent being the x, and we learned yesterday that the hypotenuse is always positive. So let's look at the first quadrant. If we're setting up our sine ratio, sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. Well, the opposite or the y is positive. So sine is positive. Cosine is also going to be positive. And tangent is going to be positive. So in the first quadrant, all of our trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, um, let's look at sine. Sine is the opposite or the y over the uh, uh, hypotenuse. So sine is positive. Cosine is the adjacent or the x over the hypotenuse. So that's a negative over a positive, which is a negative. And tangent would be the opposite over the adjacent or the y over the x. So positive over a negative is a negative. So in the second quadrant, sine is the only positive trig ratio. All the others are negative. Um, now, <clears throat> if you want to include the reciprocal ratios, the reciprocal of sine is the only positive one. So technically it's sine and cosecant. but cosine, tangent, secant, and cotangent are all negative. Third quadrant, okay? Uh, sine is the y over the hypotenuse, so it's a negative over a positive, so sine is negative. Cosine is the x over the hypotenuse, so that's a negative over a positive, which is a negative. Tangent is the y over the x, so negative divided by a negative is a positive. So in the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are the only positive. And then in the fourth quadrant, do you see a pattern starting? Which one do you think is going to be positive? Cosine is the only one left. So I'm not going to go through the whole explanation, but <clears throat> we'll just say cosine and therefore secant are positive. Now, there's a little acronym to remember this. This is how I learned it. Um, if you look and you go in the order of the quadrants, you have ASTC. Well, um, let me use a different color. I'm using too much red here. App State Teachers College. Now, I did not go to Appalachian. Um, but there are quite a few teachers at a lot of schools that went to App State. That's kind of really how they became well-known before their football team did as well as they did. Um, they were kind of a leader in the teaching profession. So <clears throat> a lot of people sometimes would call it the teacher's college. So you've got A for all, S for sine, T for tangent, and C for cosine. So those give you the positive trig ratios in that quadrant, okay? Um, now, I don't know if you need the acronym to remember it. Uh, really, if you understand my explanation, then you don't have to look at it from a memorization standpoint, uh, but it does help. App State Teachers College, all sine, tangent, cosine are your positive ratios in those quadrants. All others are negative. So, how are we going to use this? Let's look at example three. 
It says find the given ratio, given information about two others. Okay, find the given trig ratio, given information about two others. So I want to know what the value of the tangent of theta is. If I'm told cosine is equal to 2 over 3 and the cotangent is greater than 0. So I'm going to break down some of this information here. When I'm told the cosine, what they're telling me is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, correct? What do I need to know for the tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to have to figure out the opposite. I have the adjacent, but I'm going to have to figure out the opposite. But before I can do that, I have to know where I'm at. i got to know which quadrant I'm in. So that's what the other trig ratio is there for. Um, cotangent of theta is greater than zero. Well, what is that a fancy way of saying? If we say something's greater than zero, it's a fancy way of saying it's positive. Exactly. It's a fancy way of saying that cotangent is positive. All right? But let's think about it. We have two options for where cotangent can be positive, right? Because in the first quadrant, everything's positive. In the third quadrant, cotangent's positive. Okay, so we are either in the first or the third. That's what that piece of information is telling me. Well, how do I pick between the two? Well, they, they gave me another trig ratio. Cosine right here, 2 over 3. That's positive. So, where is cosine positive? Cosine is positive where everything's positive in the first, and it's positive in the fourth. So, where do those two overlap? They overlap in the first. So, I know that I'm in the first quadrant. So, now I can draw my triangle and correctly figure out um, the rest of my ratio here. So the cosine, the adjacent is 2, the hypotenuse is 3. I need to figure out the opposite. So I need to do 9 minus 4 is 5, take the square root. So that's the square root of 5 is my opposite side. I just did the Pythagorean theorem in my head. If you need to do it on the paper, that's fine. I apologize if I went too fast there. So that's the opposite. So tangent of this angle, whatever it is, theta, is equal to the opposite, square root of 5, over the adjacent 2. A lot of information, right? Let's do another one. That's why I got four examples on there. I'll slow down a little bit. <clears throat> okay. We want to find cosine. If we are told sine is 1 over 4, so I'm going to go ahead and start labeling some things. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so I'm going to have to figure out the opposite. They tell me tangent is less than 0. So if it's less than 0, it's a fancy way of saying it's negative. So let's figure out what quadrant we're in. Sine, the ratio they gave me here was positive. So sine is positive where everything's positive in the first, and it is positive in the second. App state. Okay, first and second, sine is positive. Tangent. Tangent, we're looking for where it's negative. Well, it's positive in the first. Sine's the only positive one in the second, so that means it's negative in the second. Tangent's positive in the third, and so then that means it is negative again in the fourth. So those two overlap. The only way that sine can be positive and tangent can be negative is if our triangle is in the second quadrant. So I can set up my triangle. The opposite is 1. The hypotenuse is 4. That's not very much to scale, but it's okay. All my triangles end up looking the same. So Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared minus 1 squared is 15. Square root of 15, not a perfect square, so we just got to leave it. We want O. Oh, Little detail, we're in the second quadrant. 
what do I need to do to that 15? Square root of 15. It's got to be negative. I almost forgot that detail. You got to make sure that once you locate the quadrant, your coordinates agree accordingly. Okay. Um, so the cosine of this angle is the adjacent negative square root of 15 over the hypotenuse of Let's keep going. Let's find the secant of an angle. Secant is the reciprocal of which one? Cosine. Cosine. So that means it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. If the sine, the opposite over the hypotenuse, is negative 2 over 5, so sine is negative, what quadrants are we in? third or fourth because it's positive in the first and the second and cosine is greater than zero aka it is positive which is in the first and the fourth so we are in the fourth quadrant here So, my opposite is negative 2. Well, that's nice. I don't have to remember to put the negative in there. My hypotenuse is 5. I need to find the adjacent. Be careful when you're doing this. Again, you're squaring a negative number, so you've got to make sure you get parentheses around it if you put the negative in there. 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4. 25 minus 4 is 21. So, that adjacent side is the square root of 21. Secant, we put the hypotenuse, 5 over the adjacent, which is positive because x coordinates are positive in the fourth quadrant. I'm not going to rationalize it. I'm just going to leave. All right. One more of these. Let's find the sign if... We're told the cotangent in the secant. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So if tangent's opposite over adjacent, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Tangent's positive where everything's positive in the first. And App State teachers, third. Secant is less than zero. It is negative. So secant's the reciprocal of cosine. <coughs> Cosine's positive in the first and the fourth, so it's negative in the second and the third. So looky there. We have now had one in each quadrant. We are in the third quadrant this time. Cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. Yes. Um, well, we don't know anything about the sign. We just want to we want to find what sign is. We're given information about the cotangent and the secant. <clears throat> now. Is there some detail I need to add to that? If I'm asking that question, probably, yeah. What do I need to add to those coordinates there? Negatives, because we're in the third quadrant. X is negative, Y is negative. Now, why didn't that show up in the trig ratio? Well, because they're both negative. A negative divided by a negative is positive. So you have, to be, you have to be on the lookout for stuff like that. I know it's a little tricky. may seem a little unfair, but... Y'all are smart. You can do it. I know y'all just love hearing that, right? Y'all are smart. You'll figure it out. 
All right. Uh, this time, this is the normal Pythagorean theorem. Seven.